Hello there, Jose Rodriguez. It is Tuesday, the 16th of May. We're getting ready to go pick up Nathan in about an hour from his school. But I wanted to um, show you some more of my images printed on the P800 using that enhanced roll paper, enhanced matte paper that is from Epson. And $39 for a 100 foot roll of this paper. You just cannot beat that in free shipping. Got it from eBay. A company is selling it. They have three rolls left, and I think I might buy one more, maybe two more rolls. I'll leave one roll for other people to get. Anyway, I wanted to show you some images that are not necessarily originally the most eye-catching that you would ever have. In fact, these are images that I never really intended to print, but then I decided to process them a little bit uh, more artistically and sort of add a little drama and uh, interest to the images. I'm going to show you a set of monochromes at first and I printed these using advanced black and white which remember you have to let the driver control color no ICC profile you basically tell the driver to control color turn off color control in your application in this case it's always Q image for me so in QImage, instead of choosing a profile, I just tell it to let the printer control the color. And then that way, I am able to use advanced black and white. It is at the dark setting, which is the default, and neutral. You can change that by going into the advanced tab and adjusting your tonalities. So you can get an actual sepia tone or just a slightly cool image or slightly warmer than just dead on neutral. By the way, P800 with Precision Colors inks, which are not 100% matched to OEM, and yet they work perfectly on the P800 using this paper. When I do print with color management, I use the Enhanced Matte Paper Profile, and I am able to also produce a perfectly neutral print using Enhanced Black and White. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. A shot of a man waiting for transportation. I did this in Europe a uh, long time ago. Again, this was from film, and I scanned the negative. You can see I treated it as if it was an HDR image by adding some of that look that you get. And basically, I used a program that allows you to just load a single image and then apply that look to it. I'll have to go back and see what it was that I used. And if you guys are interested, I can let you have that information. Although there are many, many that allow you to do that. But again, perfectly neutral all the way across from the darkest to the brightest. The original image is really not that great. It is kind of drab. So by adding that special HDR look, that kind of brought it up to a little bit higher level. This thing was originally a color image. Just so happens that the sun was shining through the clouds like that. And of course, it's underexposed. In color, it is horrible. But black and white brings it to life. So black and white conversion, keeping it as RGB, and then you're able to shift your colors to adjust the way colors are rendered in gray tones and so this is the best that I could come up with I still have the horizon line of the mountains the hills and uh, clearly visible the black is as black as you can get the HD black that the PC K3 HD ink set from precision colors is using is tremendous on this paper okay so I think I have found a perfect marriage now. Unfortunately, of course, you cannot refill the P800, sadly. But for those of you who have a P600, use the same ink set from Precision Colors. If you are using a matte type paper, you don't have to worry about matte paper not giving you that strong, deep black. Use that ink set. You'll be printing very cheaply as well. All right, so here is what I did. Basically, converted to black and white, adjusted my color rendition using the sliders, 
in the black and white adjustment section of Photoshop, and I was able to achieve this. Then I dodged and burned in certain areas. Boom. No need to sharpen this. I actually did a noise reduction to remove some of the digital noise that was present in these regions here. And that's it. Now it's a nice dramatic shot. You see the two silhouettes of people standing there at the hill looking over the valley. And it is just marvelous the way the sun rays are streaming down. That turned out quite nice. And again, it was a super drab image. Same thing with this. This is from a 6x6 negative scan, by the way. I believe I used an old Yashica mat, okay, with 120 film. Probably used plus X. And this is out in California somewhere. Probably, oh gosh, when I lived there in the early 60s to the almost end of the 60s before I went into the Army. But I was always out, and this is, of course... Um, Low tide and a bunch of little fishing boats are basically stranded. This happens every day as the tide goes in and out. Again, this was a black and white negative, so no conversion was required. But I scanned it as an RGB. And then I went ahead and increased the contrast a lot more. Did some work on the sky to darken it and bring that cloud contrast out a little bit more. And that is basically it. Printed it in QImage using the output sharpening that it contains the deep focus sharpening this was originally a color image converted to black and white in color it was just as drab as you can imagine and so black and white conversion increased the contrast a bit use a noise reduction on the sky q image has noise reduction capabilities for shadows mid-tones and highlights or just overall so I just use mid-tone noise reduction of course noise is invisible in super dark areas anyway so this huge span of sky did have a little bit of granularity to it so I applied that filter and that took care of it and now it's an interesting image rule of thirds I think as well as I could, you know, get it. And um, my eye immediately goes to the tree. All right. Again, the, the, the moral here is that these images were horrible to begin with. They were very drab and non-interesting. Again, this was a color image. Uh, in color, it is just kind of bluish and, you know, really not worthy of printing. There is just enough detail on the snowbank. Cloudy day, dark trees, and that prominent Christmas tree looking little pine or fir tree in the middle of the buried hill. And again, black and white is very graphic looking, really interesting in color, not so much. What else do we have here? Okay. Again, the same thing here. You print this in color. It's just another shot of a valley between two big hills. And in black and white, it just gains that drama. The drama of the sky. And again, either works in color or works in black and white. Hardly ever does it work both ways? On some rare cases, I have some images that can be printed both ways, but not so much. All right, and this is at the, oh my gosh, many years ago when Milwaukee, Wisconsin used to have the circus train from Baraboo, Wisconsin, come by. They would do a countrywide tour, and the train would finally end or the terminus at the Milwaukee train yard and they would bring out the elephants and some of the other animals and just do tricks for the people which was really silly in my view but this is a shot of the elephants rear end and the contrast is amazing. P800 enhanced 
matte paper and the PCHD K3 inks. And of course, print it in Q image. Okay, so here we have some color images finally. Did this look like that? Of course it did not. This is totally, totally changed in Photoshop. Again, a shot that was so drab, it was worthless. And now look at it. So this actually would make a great postcard for whatever it was, wherever it was that I shot this. I don't even remember. I'm horrible at that, okay? Really horrible. But again, I have tens of thousands of images stored and this was just one of them that I decided to convert and make it look this way. And again, it's just a matter of increasing saturation from what would be a drab looking image to one of them that's maybe a bit oversaturated. But in this case, I think it works. And uh, who's ever seen a sky like that? No one really. But anyway, so that's, that's one thing you could do. Again, a worthless image and then you oversaturate it and adjust the color balance. The white points are, of course, a lot yellower than neutral. And so this is what you get. And I like it. I like the contrast between the foreground and that incredible sky. Incredible, realist, unrealistic sky. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is amazing. Again, we know many people who have daughters who think they are the greatest thing to modeling. So we were at a, an abandoned house. This is actually in Sharpsburg, Maryland, where the Battle of Antietam took place. And this abandoned house exists right next to the battlefield boundaries. And we basically broke in. And I told her, I dare you to hang on that windowsill. And she sure did. And it's got a weird looking kind of a very surreal appearance to it. It almost looks diffused. And um, it was totally crooked. The lines were not parallel. I used a uh, filter in Photoshop to make everything parallel so that it would seem like I used a view camera, for instance, to make all the lines correct. But yeah, it was just simply one of the older, not so good point and shoot cameras. I think it was a Minolta that I was using it. Key, key match or Q, I don't know what it was called. Anyway, this is going back years, folks. Uh, a tree in back of Nathan's woods in color. Super drab, I mean, just, just worthless. Black and white, increase the contrast, and then tone it to a nice sepia tone. In fact, I think in this case, I did a duotone, where the shadows are a slightly different shade of brown, and the highlights or midtones are more of a yellowish sepia color, or a yellow ochre color. And it is interesting. Now it looks a lot better than it did as a black and white. So all of these, Images is what I'm saying. It's I have turned them into more unrealistic uh, versions than they were when they were untouched. Same thing here. This is in South Carolina. People walking down the beach and the tide is going out. You see how shallow this area of the beach is. Is this neutral? Of course not. It is actually yellow mustard color. But that adds character to it. I think if I had neutralized this image in Photoshop, it wouldn't work. It just would not look as interesting as this looks to me. This actually gives you that super warm uh, sunset look. The sun may have already gone down, but still the light is yellowish. But again, you could neutralize that and it will just look natural and maybe that won't work. In this case, unnatural is the, uh, the key. And uh, I, I like it. This came out nice. I love the fact that there's something here that kind of attracts my eye, makes it like a triangle of attention here. They're obviously walking that way. So I have them set on the far right third of the composition. All righty. By the way, I have another set of prints done. 
from viewers. I will have something from my friend from Australia. He's a fashion photographer, specializes in women photography, the art of women photography. And also Christine Bilby sent me another shot, which I will be showing you along with some uh, other shots from the DP review forum gallery section. Okay, this is more painterly than anything. If you remove the sun, who wants to look at this? It's just a drab image. But this gives it that look. It is almost like a, a foggy evening, the sun going down. This is in Gettysburg, by the way. And I just love this. I love the way this came out. I actually increased the saturation a little bit and brought some color to this portion of the sky here. And of course, the so-called aura around the sun and the shadows in this uh, part of the hill, just gorgeous. And the nuances, again, PA-100 is really kicking butt with this paper. And the more I use it, the more I love it. I've gone through probably 30 feet of it already. Here's one that you have seen already from past videos. This is a shot of uh, some of the farmhouses in Gettysburg. This is a part of the road uh, tour that you take on your own to look through the different areas of the battlefield. And I used the program to turn this into a painterly type rendition. In this case, kind of like a watercolor acrylic type uh, look. And you can see that it is not photographic. It is actually made up of uh, brush strokes, but gorgeous color, gorgeous, gorgeous color. Again, the untampered image eh, is one that has been shot probably thousands of times by people because as they drive by, this is what they see. Here's a shot of the Sax Bridge in Gettysburg and the Marsh Creek. The Marsh Creek crosses Gettysburg twice, kind of forms a loop. And this is one of the few fully restored cover bridges in Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania area. There's not that many. There's actually one that still has a through road in Maryland near Frederick. And I have been to that, but it's just not as picturesque as this one. So this is one that, okay, this is a nice picturesque looking shot. Again, anybody that walks through there can just simply aim the camera, bam, and you have this. So the way to enhance something like that is to post edit editing. And uh, I have completely manipulated this. Believe me, it does not look like this unmanipulated. If you look at the original raw, it is super drab. Again, this was not a very, although it looks like it's sunny on that end, I think on my end of it, it was very cloudy. So I had to do a lot of work to get this water to look the way it does and the sky and the bridge to actually look the way it does. So again, another example of an image that did not look as good as this. All right. This is actually in Germany. Gosh, I was there in the early 80s. Again, this is from a quarterchrome or ect ectochrome slide scanned. Just a bunch of rowboats in a lake. And I had to go back and, and look at this and read, oh yeah, that's German, the label on the, on the boat. Again, so this is a very simple but repetitive type image. It forms a pattern. Anytime you have a pattern of the same shape, form, colors, whatever. It makes for an interesting shot. Go ahead and shoot it. I have several shots. In the days of film, you couldn't really afford to do 10, 15 shots of uh, different variations and angles. You just shot a few and hope for the best. With the digital system that we now enjoy, you can just go hog wild and shoot as many as you would like, variations, changes of angle, and so on and you should be able to have at least a few out of that hundred images you took that are print worthy. Again, not everything goes to print, but this particular batch, I just wanted to 
emphasize that I made them print worthy simply by post processing them in a in a interesting manner. Many of them ended up not being realistic looking, but again, photography is an art and you are the artist, you are the boss. You tell that image how you want it to look and forget about what anyone else is saying. This is what you saw and this is where, or maybe when you shot it, you didn't see this, but now that you have it on your computer, you start to develop all of these ideas about how you can make an image look different. I have a couple of uh, images that I was kind of looking through the other day and I have like four or five different versions of the same original image and all of them look dramatically different. I don't even remember how I accomplished those results because stupid me, I saved them as and then did not save the information. They were saved as, as uh, JPEGs and not Photoshop files. So I don't have the layers. I don't have all of the you know, details of how I, I achieved it. But again, that was back when I was a little bit less um, experienced with Photoshop and the use of non-destructive editing methods. All right, so that is it. The next batch of prints that I will do on video will include some of those uh, ones that I mentioned, the two uh, photographers from Australia, actually. And uh, we'll look at those. And I have a few more from uh, DP Review as well. I'll leave you with this. I've been recently getting a bunch of questions, basically are tech support questions. I'm not a tech support guy. I appreciate you asking me. That shows me that you are viewing my videos, but really I am not an expert on the mechanical side of printers. Not at all. I know nothing. I can kind of serve as a printer, things that are not too invasive, but I know nothing about the mechanical aspects, especially printers that are not really a photography related type printers. What I have here in my printer army is about all I am actually experienced with. Not any of the all-in-ones, not any of the Canon all-in-ones, Epson all-in-ones. I know nothing about these little office printers. I know nothing about any other brand. I'm very inexperienced when it comes to that. So what I would recommend, I mean, I appreciate you asking me because that shows that you're looking at my videos, but I would suggest that you actually join a couple of the forums that I a member with and that is printer knowledge one word printerknowledge.com they are basically all over the world they have members from all over the world and they have some people there that are incredibly knowledgeable thus the name printer knowledge and so those people will be able to help you a lot better than I like I said I only specialize in photo printers and I actually only specialize in how to print, not how to fix, okay? So keep that in mind, please. Another one is the DP Review, Delta Papa Review, one word, dot com. And then inside the forum, look for the printer sub form and join it. And that way you will have access to a lot more expert people than me when it comes to actual mechanics of printers. And also the depth and incredible intricacies of color engineering and color management. They are basically PhDs in the subject. All right, so that is it. Thank you once again. Please don't take that the wrong way. If you still wanna ask me, go right ahead and I will probably direct you to those folks anyway in my response to you. If I cannot help you, I will direct you to someone who can or may be able to help you better than I will. All right, that is it. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.